TheMarshallMan.com. The history of traditional Chinese martial arts comprises of legends, myths, and oral stories passed down from master to student. Now the history of Wu Mei, or Ung Moi in Cantonese, is no different. Whether or not this legendary Kung Fu Empress took refuge in the Shaolin Temple, where she later founded several styles of Kung Fu, including Wing Chun and White Crane, is something that's been debated for many years. However, there's one piece of information regarding Wu Mei that is undeniable. The elusive art that Wu Mei practiced still exists, and the sophisticated knowledge embodied in all five of the Wu Mei forms was passed down to a select few. So if the art of Wu Mei survived, then maybe the stories of this legendary Kung Fu nun could be accurate after all. My name is Yap Bo Hyong. Uh, I learned under the Chi Kim Tong lineage of five ancestors. But beside five ancestors, uh, Grandmaster Chi was also a master of Wu Mei. I happened, I was lucky enough, fortunate enough to be one of the students of Wu Mei uh, through my father, who taught me Wu Mei when I was about 16 years old. And I've been practicing that ever since. And I only got to understand it after about 30 years of practice. <laughs> okay, uh, first I'd like to start by telling the oral history of our version of oral history of Wu Mei because there's a lot of uh, controversy about Wu Mei. Some say she's a legendary figure, you know, and there are many versions of the story. So this is uh, our oral history. So according to our history, uh, Wu Mei was part of the Ming royal family. So when the Qing dynasty took over, uh, they basically killed off the entire royal family, one, you know, one generation above and one generation below. So Wu Mei was lucky because the, her executioner let her off. So instead of chopping off her head, she took off one of her arms. Uh, so in our version of story, Wu Mei was only one arm. So, and let her go. So, from what we can gather, Wu Mei found her way to Wu Tang, then from Wu Tang, then she ended up in Shaolin, where she was respected as a senior monk, right, in Shaolin Temple. Uh, and in Shaolin, she not only taught her art, her martial art, but she was also an uh, organizer for the rebel army and she was like a guerrilla leader for small bands of uh, rebel fighters that fought against the Qing dynasty. Eh? Yes. And this went on for some time until the Qing dynasty, you know, uh, sent a big army down to burn down the Southern Shaolin Temple and Wu Mei, her last known place of residence was she escaped to the north in the Yunnan province in what is called Ermei San. And this lends some, you know, basis to the fact that some Ermei people claim that their art come from Wu Mei. Eh? But in our oral history, that was uh, in a very brief, you know, version of the story, that is what happened. But, but her art, well, we suspect, right, uh, although it was mainly Shaolin based, has some uh, Wu Tang influences because in the Wu Mei forms and she only passed in our lineage we only have five of the forms the forms were named after the elements right uh, rather than given animal names and so on much like the Shaolin tradition so the five the four elements actually was uh, wind thunder uh, cloud and rain okay? so to me, this sort of lends evidence to the fact that Wu Mei may have some Wu Tang influence because of, of the, the names of the forms and they were very much uh, elemental, yes. you know, forces rather than the traditional names which are named after, you know, uh, animals or that more or things like that. And for, and the master who taught Wu Mei to Grandmaster Qi 
was the name was a guy by the name of Yang Yue, Yang Yue in Mandarin or Yong Yuk in uh, Cantonese and this was in a Putian village in Fujian and at that time based on what we can gather from Grandmaster Chi uh, Yang Yue actually had quite a number of mas uh, students in, in, the, in the village he had about a few hundred students but unfortunately even though when my father went back to China in the 80s and 90s he couldn't find a trace of any students of Yang Yue, you know, in the village. He, sorry, he only found one old man who could barely remember his forms, but he had none of the advanced skills, you see, like Yang Yue has, or like what uh, Grandmaster Chi had. You see. So it seems that even that tradition is lost in China. And even within our Chi Kim Tong schools and family, there are very few people who actually practice Wumei. Although maybe more people know about it, but not many people uh, seriously practice it. Aside from our lineage of Wumei, uh, as far as I know, there's only one other lineage uh, that exists in uh, New York City. I think you can Google them. I th uh, you know, you Google Wumei New York, I think you'll find their school. But from what I showed to my father, the forms and the way their strokes you know, are it's very different from the way we do it because Wumei is a woman's art so most of the forms and action will be more close because it's meant to protect yeah, your modesty so to speak so it will not have uh, action and strokes that are like way out here you know and that would be quite unusual for so-called a woman's art one of the characteristics uh, as my father told me right of Wumei it, in Cantonese is very ho pa. So what that word means in Chinese, roughly translated means it sort of occupies and dominates your space. So when the Wu Mei hand goes in, it's already dominated your space and it crowds sort of like crowds you and don't give you many options for you know any counter or any movement. You see? So the, that is one of the strong characteristics of Wu Mei. Uh, the other one is sort of uh, attacks and defend at the same time so it doesn't have like one block and then one strike so the defend and the strike goes together okay that's the other typical characteristic and the third one is because of its softness and because its control of E is very fine uh, it makes it very difficult for the opponent to sense that's the whole intention is it? it's so it, we call it it's, uh, it's very stealth. It has a high level of stealth mode. You know, it's very stealth. So once it touches you, by the time when it goes in, you you get hit before you realize it. You see, so it's predominantly a uh, striking art. Okay, it wants to hit you. It doesn't want to bounce you. It doesn't want to throw you. It basically wants to enter your defense and hit you. Okay, and a lot of that is uh, all internal power. You can generate power in very short ranges, uh, all using internal means. Uh, yeah. It is a very sophisticated art, although there were not many forms. The, the depth of the knowledge contained in the art signifies that it's not something that somebody invented out of thin air. See? So to me, the existence of the art sort of lends theory, you know, lends to the theory that Wu Mei actually existed, see? rather than just being a legend. Yeah. Yes. Because if it's just legendary, then you have an art that could be very simplistic, or didn't have much theory, or nobody really knows much about it. Eh? But in this case, we have uh, quite a deep depth of knowledge about the art and its theories. Wu Mei was allegedly the founder of Wing Chun. So if you throw a punch here, the average Pak Sao would be here. Yes. Average Pak Sao. Okay. If you throw a punch here, Wu, Wu Mei's Pak Sao would be this. Okay. That hurts, that stings. Yes. Sorry, I don't know why it stings, okay? So what, it, what she does is that, you see, when she, her hand never moves out more than her shoulder. You see, I don't need to move you this way. That is out my shoulder. Yes. All I do is from here. That's enough. That's her being nasty. That's her being physical. You know, that, that hurts, that hurts. Because that's her being physical. Now, she wants to really intimidate you, 
that is intimidating in a hard, a hurtful type of way. Sure. Now, punch again. Okay, you move backwards. Yes. She doesn't hurt you now. So now it's, it's not, it's not doesn't hurt me here. And it yeah. goes past the contact yeah. right into my feet. Yeah. It unsettles you straight away. Yes. So again, you punch. She's very soft. Yes. That's all she does. Again, you watch the angle. She doesn't move up, move up anyway. You see, what she did was that she directed her yi right to your center. Yes. And you move this way. Yes. That's her, that is her type of characteristic. So when she does this, you're unsettled. She can move in any way she likes. So she bypasses the contact point. That's correct. Taps into your center. And That's, then correct. Afterwards. That's correct. That's yes. correct. Right, straight to where your block is. You know, because at touch, I feel a whole mess here. I go into that mess. Yes. I moved it. So, you say my finger, where my finger point is where it is going. So, you go, I unsettle you and I hit. Yes. So there is no lots of movement. And that goes through her, you, you, you see her form when she does this. Okay, so this, just one movement, one simple movement. She can do what she likes. She can either hurt you or she just move your structure. Yes. So in the first form, in the first form, as you see, she goes this way. So if you punch from here, you know, you punch. Yes. So at this touch, your whole body is dragged forward. And here, you try to do two punches. Like a chain yeah? punch? Yeah, like a chain right? punch, you know. Oh, yeah, this one has okay. one, two. Okay. Yeah. Your yeah, second one cannot come up. No. Your second arm cannot come up. So people think I do chain punch. Eh? The first punch, Wu Mei touches you, the second punch cannot come up. Yeah, you control my whole body on the first contact. Yes, I uh, control. Yes. And the Chinese like poems, you know, and they say, when Guan Gong stroke his beard, be careful. So it's the same stroke. Same stroke, pum. So Wu Mei goes. So it's extremely fast. Yes. So I let it feel the spiral energy. So as it comes in. Okay. Mm, it spirals all the way to my arm. Yeah. Again, here. Put my shoulder. See. For me to push you is not possible. All you got to do is to bend your elbow yes. a little bit and it's not physically possible for me. I don't care how strong I am. Physics says I cannot take your elbow. Yes. Now, what I do is I use spiral energy and I'll lift you. Yeah, now you're taking my structure as well. So you, you feel something from your heel coming up like that. And I didn't feel anything here at the contact no. point. There's nothing there. Yeah. Okay, see? I take it from your heel. Huh? Gone. Yeah, this floats me <laughs> Yes. That's, that, that, that's characteristic of uh, Wu Mei. So this is using the same technology as you were shown with the strike. Yes. Spiraling up from yes. the arm. Yes. Yes. I did exactly the same thing when you felt me just now. Yes. You know, you feel like that. What I did was that I transfer it to your body. Because I know my own body. I know my own mechanism. So I need to purge my body first. And in studying the biomechanics of my body, I know exactly what it is. Mm. You are human. You've got exactly what I have inside my body. Right. So I move what I move, what I move in my body, I use that to move yours. That's why you feel it from your heel. You know, something twisted up. And it probably it's like somebody using a spanner to unscrew your heel. So I just unscrew it. Because you started in your heel, that's it correct. attacks my heel. That's correct. Right. I started from grounds up. Yes. And that's called, they call it drawing power from the ground. One of the early principles of Southern Shaolin, drawing power from the ground. And that's how I do it. And that's what the first form teaches us. The first form teaches us how to spiral energy from the ground. And the smaller the spiral is, the lighter the touch is. So 
uh, from a big strong uh, let's say a thick wire you start to refine it down to a piano thin type of wire so that's what the first form does the second form the killing wind palm talks about stretching and vibrating the strings you see so whereas the first one is about winding up the strings so it's about stretching so it derives the ting from the stretching of the strings you see and in wume is very there's a lot of e involved in it right because the e has to read you know direct the movement of the strings and direct the flow of the ching that's generated one of the the characteristics of the form is it basically starts like this one two right three fist up down and then it goes out it repeats so that is one set of movements from the form and it's the whole set is like maybe 28 movements we, we counted it there's only 28 movements now. but there's so much involved in that okay? so just from this thing alone see right so this is what we call uh, in Cantonese it's called a pun zao or you can call it's like a basin you're holding a basin okay? this you find in some of the white cranes they have this as well right and this is also in a wume one of the characteristic strokes in wume and the way this will work is this, you see, once you throw a punch or do anything, yeah, you see, it's here already. It's in, your whole structure's been taken and it strikes. So slowly, it's again from here, see, it cuts in and there. So you notice that this movement, this small circle here, already destabilizes you. Yeah, sh right? shaking my body. Yeah, and then, shum, it's in. Yes. All right? So that is characteristic of who made a lot of small movements. But the small movements make a lot of difference. Again, just again, the final point. So from here, you see, I'm cutting in, right? That you can feel, right? It yes, goes down to your feet sure. already. So once I sink this and I turn it, mm. you're already going, yeah. And I go in. So I guess the real question is, how are you tapping into my structure at that point? Because you're lightly touching my arm, but it's shaking my whole body. Yes, that's because I'm connected into your body. I'm using my E, in a sense, to connect into your body, and then I can basically manipulate your body. So it's, that's just like what Ben did. So if again, I use this, right? Once I cut, see, this is nothing. This is the initial contact. But at initial contact, I want, I'm using my E to connect in. So once I've got that, when I do this, see, his shoulder moves back. Yes. When I sink down, it goes into his feet. Yeah, now my feet is heavy. Yeah. Right? So when I turn out, it will take his hip. Yes. And then it's in. You see, so it's very E-based. So, and the key of it is really, yes, you can do that slowly, but the key, in the case of Wu Mei, is you do it at the point of contact. So that's where the difficulty of the art lies, you see. To be able to do something like this in slow motion, yes, I think quite a number of people can do that, right? A certain number of people do that. But we will do it at full speed, uh, that, is where the training and the practice comes in. But essentially, it's the same principle, right? Yeah. And another favorite move of it is this, right? So it does the crane hand, the tap, and then the scoop, right? Then from here, it's either here or strike, you see? So if you throw a punch, you see, you're already there, right? So up to me, right? So from here, again, this is here, out, right? So once you throw a punch, you're there. This is mine. This is mine. Right? I can then, that hand can't do much, you see? No. Right? Because that's been obstructed, right? So again, I do the same thing here. And this goes in. So you're looking to take my structure the whole time. You're not just playing around with the arms. No. no. The whole idea is I'm tapping in, always tapping in, you see? So it could be a very light touch, you say. See? But I'm already in, right? Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah, you can feel yourself floating. Yeah. And it, once I turn, uh, you see? Yeah. Now it's twisted me here. Yeah, it's there. It's, All right. It's very hard to defend against this because you don't feel where the power is coming from. Yes. It's not at the contact point. Yes. And it's not a gross movement, you see? If I do this, right? And I, yeah. no, I swing around, right? Yeah, he can use my momentum, you see? But I do this, it's only the twist of the wrist. There's nothing there to use. Yeah, there's nothing there to use, right? And already I've got control. <laughs> yeah. 
right? So that is the characteristic of moving. Very small movements, really. Very fine movements, yes. right? And even this move, right? So if you throw a punch, see, I'm in there. I'm cutting. I'm attacking at the same time. So this is like the characteristic that you mentioned earlier. Attack and defense and attack, yeah. Simultaneously. Oh, yeah, that's it. And it's very precise with angles, you see. So that when you come in, you see, I defend and it's already in. Mm. See, this can't come in, right? Because it's been blocked here. And this is going in already. Yes. Right? And if I need to exert force, it's just again the string. <laughs> right? All right? All right? Yes. Ah, yeah. So you so can when, see. When you exert force, see. you start in the feet again. Yeah. It comes up from the Just chuk, chuk, boom, it goes up. Yes. You see, I just want to show one of the characteristics. Just now, Kiran asked, right, how do I manage to take his body, right? Yeah, how By do you a very tap. It is through E. Basically, once I contact, I basically sense, you know, you can say his tendon or his fascia. I can go in through either of that. And once I can tap into it, I move. He doesn't have to offer me force. Let's say you put out a hand here. This hand is soft. There's no power here at all, right? If it's hard, then it's can, you can say it's easy for me to tap in. So what I tap in is just by rubbing. Now nah, here, I've got it already. Okay. You feel it? I, here, yeah. I don't feel anything, but yeah. I feel like my body and my balance is falling in yeah. this direction. So I can either put it in this direction. Now it's going this way. Or that direction, or down. Yes. Right? So I've already tapped in. Really. So even if you change, I'm following in. Really. It's there. Now so, you're going back. Yes. Right? Yeah. So and it's very light. You're not giving any force. I'm not giving you any force. If I do this, yes, sure. I get taken. <laughs> right? Yeah. So this is E. Right? So of course, yeah, that's E. And again, this is pure E because I'm not projecting any ting, any power. But once I've got in, if I want to project ting, this is ting. Right? Yes. Uh, this will be a strike. Right? So we don't fatching and push some guy. You're not in not Wumei's case anyway. Wumei basically wants to strike, you know? yeah. yeah. So, so it's all through feel and sensitivity. So in that sense, that's why the chi sao is a good thing. You develop that sensitivity. But to me, it's not just a matter of oh moving around. The sensitivity is once I touch, I want to tap in. Hmm. See? Now you're taking me already. Yeah, I've tapped him already. So that is the ultimate aim of sensitivity training in in Wing Chun. And in that sense, and that's what we're exploiting in Wumei. Eh? Yes. Once I tap in, I want to be able to tap into his system, so to speak, and be able to control his structure. Eh? Yes. Right? And that is the finesse of Wumei. So when you say that you're tapping into my structure here with the touch, what yeah. exactly are you tapping into? I'm use, using my E to sense your tendons and your fascia. So once I sense, I actually try to gain access to your strings. And once I have access to your strings, I basically control your structure, you see. <laughs> so I come from an IT background. Another way of putting at it is I've hacked your system. You see? Okay. <laughs> right? So it's like a hacker that gains access to your system through some backdoor or virus. And once that virus connects into the system, I have access to what is in there. You see? So it's basically the same. But in this case, it's done through touch and sensitivity. And it's not just sensitivity also, it's also my E. You see? So it's the sensitivity plus the E Right? And then and using that to tap in. Yes. Yeah? yeah? So it doesn't matter. I could be in a chi sao situation. Let's say we do a Wing Chun chi sao, right? So once I touch now, really? yeah. yeah, I can't even roll now. Yeah, you can't roll really? because you're, you're fighting for your balance, right? Yes. So I change now. I take it from this side. Yes. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It actually does feel like that. It feels like somebody's taken over my system and. Yeah. Uh, I'm being pulled in one direction, my body's telling me to go there, but yeah. I have no yeah. understanding why yeah. I'm going yeah. there. You yeah. can stop it, and there's yeah. nothing I can do about it. Yes. And it, you, you, there's no force there, you know, I'm, I'm not putting pressure on you, no. right? No. If I do this and do this, yeah, you know how to react, yeah. You can actually redirect that force back to me. Yes. But if I do this, now I'm thinking, yeah. yeah. Nothing to redirect. Yeah, there's nothing to redirect. Yeah. And there's nothing to fight against. It's, yeah. And that is the sophistication of Omei. Really. So she has that soft part where she just uses the E to redirect or you know mis misdirect you yes. to take your structure so that you cannot generate power. You know? And then she strikes it.
themarshallman.com.